Join me today in my newest episode of Mechs Not in MWO. Please enjoy. Today's episode, The Longbow. Manufactured by Starcore Industries. Production year, 2610. Class, Assault. Introduced in 2480. Cost to produce, 7.5 million C-bills. Mass, 85 tons. The Longbow, introduced in 2480. As the LGB-0C Longbow, has been in service in the armies of the Inner Sphere since the days of the Star League and is one of the most well-known fire support mechs in existence. The Longbow is a massive battle mech weighing in at 85 tons and is able to move at a top speed of 54.0 kmh thanks to a st The Longbow carries four launchers in all. The largest are a pair of Holly LRM-20s which have the firepower of two Delta Dart LRM-5s added to them. Combined, the launchers can put a devastating barrage of up to 50 missiles at ranges of 630 meters. To protect itself in close combat, the Longbow has two series arms medium lasers. The LGB-0C The original Longbow built in 2480. This Free Worlds League design carried twin LRM-20s, each with three tons of ammunition, supported by two medium lasers and a small laser. The primitive technology used limited the design's top speed to 54 kmh, but this was deemed acceptable for a fire support unit. The location of the LRM launchers in the arms allowed it to fire in a wider arc, a feature prized by pilots. The primitive armor provided some protection, but many felt it was too thin. This design would go on to become one of the most popular and widely distributed as the manufacturer Lockenberg Holly Industries merged with several other manufacturers to form StarCore Industries. Most of the other variants, which are many, are somewhat the same. Some carry medium pulse lasers, some carry XL engines, some add LRM-5s to LRM-20s with Artemis, but mostly, the most interesting variant that I can see is the LGB-13 NAIS. This variant removes all missile launchers from the longbow and uses a standard fusion engine. Though it does use an endosteel frame to save weight, each arm mounts three light autocannon fives that can make use of special munitions produced by the Federated Suns. To ensure that it can mount such ammunition, seven tons are allotted to the ammunition bins. A Guardian ECM suite protects it from enemy electronics while a C-3 slave uses the targeting data from other C-3 equipped units to improve its accuracy. The 13 NAIS mounts on ER small lasers and a pair of ER medium lasers, along with a pair of B-pods for use against battle armor. Notable pilots, Lieutenant Cedric Svensson, one of the original mech warriors to serve with the Draconis Combine, Sorens' Sabres, his ancient LGB Dash 0 w variant of the longbow had fallen into ill repair, missing two heat sinks and its right arm being unable to hold its full allotted allotment of armor. Design Quirks The LGB-0C longbow variant is subject to the following design quirks. A cramped cockpit, extended torso twist, improved communications, searchlight, weak legs, and in 2506, obsolete. More information. Malician Tetro. Faction? Northwind Highlanders. Before the collapse of the HPG network, Malician Tetro was a weekend warrior for the Northwind Militia Reserve. Work she considered to be supplemental income for her day job as an agromech driver. Born on Almac, one of several nearby Davian worlds closely aligned and influenced by the Republic, and hailing from a military family, she considered such service as much of a civic duty as part of a genuine effort to earn her citizenship. 
The HPG crash, however, activated Tetro full-time, and her aptitude scores particularly with missile and ballistic gunnery were impressive enough to raid a full-fledged battle mech in a Highlander support lance. Despite her skills, however, it seemed almost as though Tetro has yet to catch up with the whirlwind of events since the breakdown of interstellar communications, and she lacks initiative both on and off the battlefield, often relying on others to think for her. Her longbow included two Holly LRM-20s, two Delta Dart LRM-5 missile racks, and two series arm medium lasers. The longbow assault battle mech was built with missile support in mind and has been a rare yet effective staple of every great house army since the Star League era. Her, her particular longbow was a variant introduced in 2610, which was designed to correct some of the problems inherent in the original series produced by StarCore Industries. Though still not a popular design, it did correct most of the fundamental flaws of the original, such as no clothes in weaponry and a lack of sufficient heat sinks. Tetra's longbow, serial number LA5011-51C, saw action during the closing years of the FEDCOM Civil War. The mech was among many piloted by Lyrans who followed Stone's coalition to victory on Terra. And from there, both Warrior and Machine joined in the creation of his Republic. Tetro has nicknamed the machine the Black Cloud. All right, so I think I mean I think that uh, you know Longbow is definitely a very very well known um, old school battle mech, and you know I feel like of course it was overshadowed by mechs like the Catapult, kind of kind of forgotten a little bit. Um, there was actually another mech that I I actually thought was the longbow until I actually looked at the design and it was the the Yeoman, and it's got a very similar stature, similar type of build to it. Um, I'm I haven't actually read about the Yeoman too much, but it looks like it does something similar. It's got to, you know the giant missile pods on each side, humongous, insane. The only thing I could see wrong, of course, and I, I did agree with the ammunition issues, like, you know, if you were, unless, you wouldn't, you wouldn't bring a longbow into a situation where you didn't, you didn't have scouted, or if you didn't know the area well, um, if there could be, be an ambush, you, I mean, I feel like you would have a longbow in the very back, of course, since it's long range, and at the time, 640-something meters being its, you know, max range was a big deal, I mean, it wasn't until when I read Blood of Blood of Kerensky Volume One that they had seen, um, you know, like extended range weapons for the first time, and they were like, "There's no way that large laser, you know, hit me from 800 meters away or or however far it was." Uh, so at the time, that was amazing, and I'm sure uh, another interesting thing would be to find out did they? I'm sure they added on to it once. Um, depending on how many were left, and I'm sure there were, were many left um, after the clan invasion, uh, but I'm sure they added on to the uh, to the range of that, you know, made them better. But then again, you did have catapults going around, and they were probably more more protective of their pilots because ammo explosions. I would it would seem as if they would be very common in mechs like the longbow. But then again, you wouldn't want to put a longbow in, in that sort of situation. It would be kind of a freak accident, like if you got ambushed, or if you had a Goss sniper that you know was targeting a longbow's um, ammunition pods. Uh, considering they knew where the ammo was stored, which most of the time it was stored in the same area, there wasn't too many places to put it. But uh, getting a lucky shot and you know killing the pilot in an ammo explosion would be uh, crazy. I tried to find some more information on it. I couldn't find too much. Um, but such a cool mech and such a great, great one to do. I'm glad that one came up. There's a lot of mechs, a lot of different ones, and there's actually some mechs in here that are kind of iffy, like, um, I don't want to say one of the names I was going to do. Um, there's one called the Guardian, and it's actually, uh, uh, I was looking at it, and I'm like, it's not an actual lore-friendly mech, although it is kind of, it's, it's kind of iffy, because they mention... Uh, it's a security mech that they sold to, you know, uh, people that want to do security around their, their uh, maybe their bases or their, or, their, or their businesses in the urban urban environments in the cities. 
Um, so they were slow. They were similar to Urban Max, although they looked a lot better than Urban Max. You know, they had machine guns on them, probably some small lasers, but um, they had never mentioned the actual name Guardian as the name of those security mechs. They kind of uh, had had mentioned that they were in a, a unit called the Guardians, or you know, two of those Guardian uh, pilots. <laughs> I'm not sure. But it's very interesting, so if you want to look up the Guardian, um, I'll just add this in as a little side piece, because there's really not a lot to go off of on it. It is an interesting mech. Apparently it's really slow, so it wouldn't be really great in battle, but it's good for security purposes. Seeing a Guardian go up against an Irby would probably end really badly for the Guardian, I'm guessing, considering the Irby can carry an AC-20. Look. Very interesting. Longbow is a great mech. I'm glad they didn't put an M MWO because of the design and how 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 crazy it is. It wouldn't. It would look kind of funny. I'm pretty sure. And I'm pretty sure that PGI has to go off certain design lines. But uh, definitely. And you know, I'm sure. Actually, they probably got some. Sh uh, BattleTech probably got some shit from Army Gold for the longbow design because I almost put a picture up here and I thought it was a, a, a FASFA picture or you know something that Matt Plog drew, drew or came up with and uh, it was actually a Harmony Gold drawing and it was uh, called something else but uh, very similar <laughs> drawings there and uh, but nonetheless Longbow awesome mech check out the Guardian 2 just to, if you're interested in finding out about this mech it's it's kind of up in the air. They're not really considering it a, a, a real mech because they're not sure exactly, but they have enough hints and clues to, to, to call it the Guardian because of some really old, old uh, entries and some Battletech stuff. So check that out. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next episode.